Good evening, everyone. It's really good to see you tonight. Well, at least the temperature went down a little bit today. It wasn't nearly as hot as it has been. So we praise the Lord for that, right? Yes. Okay. But uh, welcome on this. It, the, t the temperature in here is really, really nice. So, But you know, what we want is the fire of the spirit, right? Yes. Yeah. Now, we have a lot of our people downstairs are having a big meeting tonight with the youth and everything. So a lot of people down there. But, you know, let's just really pray that God's spirit will fall all over this place. Because we want God to move on our youth and our children and all of us, right? We really want God to be glorified in our midst. Because that's all that matters. It's not about our programs. It's not about what we're... What, it, it, it's about Jesus, isn't it? It's only ever about Him. So this is going to be our prayer. So Father, as we start tonight, we're asking that you would be glorified in our midst. That you be glorified in our lives and in our church. And one of the verses says, in our song. Because Lord, we want to be singing. We want to be a singing people. We want to sing our testimony. Because you said that the, the mountains and the hills will break forth into singing. And we know that if we are silent, you said, Jesus, that even the rocks would cry out. So, Lord, I'm praying that we will not be silent and that in these days, these dark days that we have found ourselves, these uncertain days that we have found ourselves, that, Lord Jesus, we would be bold, that we would speak with clarity and the truth of the gospel, and that, Lord Jesus, you would be glorified in all that we say or do, for it's in your glorious name we pray. So, Lord Jesus, be glorified in us tonight, please. Sing with us, please. short verses, but isn't that a powerful prayer here tonight? Can we go back to the beginning? Thank you. Just the instrument. 
instruments, just the instruments. Yes, Lord, make it your prayer. Aren't you glad that there is nothing more powerful than the blood of Jesus tonight? Amen. Amen. Nothing but the blood. for sin atone, not of good that I have done. There's nothing good that I could do to atone for my sins. Right. Nothing. The only thing that can atone for my sins and your sins and the sins of the world is the blood of Jesus. Can you say the blood of Jesus is all powerful? Come on. The blood of Jesus is all powerful. Amen. Amen. And I love it. This is all my hope and peace. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my righteousness. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Amen. Come on, church. Ready? This is all my hope and peace. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Don't you love our praise band? Don't you love our praise band? 
And I'll tell you, and Noy, Brother Noy down here, he is getting ready to also play the electric guitar with us. Yeah. We're going to have a full-fledged praise band here real soon. Yeah. And Brother Rick, he's going to be coming on board with us with another male voice. Hallelujah for another male voice. Oh, boy, do I need that. Okay. So the Lord is on the move, and he's doing amazing things. And, you know, uh, Brother Joel is going to be sharing with us here in just a little bit. And I, I asked him to share. I asked him to share it tonight because uh, Sunday afternoon we had our international service, and he had a powerful word. It was a powerful word. I told him he had to condense it a little bit, though. <laughs> but anyway, but it was a powerful word. And, and, and he was really talking about, you know, the characteristics of what it means to be a Christian. What it means to be a Christian. It was just, it was so powerful. And so I asked, would you please share that with us? And so the, the songs I chose tonight, Joel, really kind of go, you know, be glorified in my life, you know, nothing but the blood. But this next song really, really says it all. And that is, take my life and let it be consecrated Lord to thee take my moments and my days let them flow in ceaseless praise every one of these verses it goes to take my life my hands my voice my silver that's my, my money but possessions my will and my love take it all Lord so I really want you to make this your prayer because this is a prayer this hymn is a prayer to God tonight okay so I want to encourage it let's let's sing it and let's just make this our prayer to him tonight okay Take my lips and let them be filled with messages from thee. We got to speak life, church. Come on. We got to speak life. We got to speak health and wholeness and deliverance. We got to speak glory in the name of Jesus. That's what this old dark world needs, right? Amen. Wow, what a dark world we live in. We have it. We have it. We have it within us. We must share it. We must declare it. Let's declare it. Okay, take my silver. Take my silver. we would only be ever, ever, only all 
for thee. Amen. Amen. Thank you, church. We're going to go into a time of prayer here. And uh, there's a lot, you know, of needs in our midst, a lot of issues and things going on, people not feeling well, the heat, this and that, and what have you. But I want to just encourage you, let's look to Jesus tonight, because it is worth it all to follow him. It is worth it all. Uh, there's some special needs that we want to really lift up to you uh, tonight. Uh, a, a really important unspoken need, I can't share it with you, but would you please be praying about it? Let's just pray that God... God will do exactly what he wants to do in the situation. Let's pray that, okay? So, Lord, I pray you'll do it. This unspoken need, you do it, Lord. Touch, Lord. Touch, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I also want to lift up to you uh, Jess. I was talking to uh, Kathy today, uh, and uh, he's not doing well. Uh, they actually uh, have called him hospice, okay? Uh, and so let's really be praying for him. He's, he's very, very, uh, you know, very lonely, very confused. Uh, he's, had, he's been in and out of the emergency room of the hospital really just week after week after week. Uh, and he's just not doing well. Uh, and so I just want to encourage you to be praying for him. And, and part of the reason they called in hospice is because nobody's allowed in the nursing home. So there's nobody, his family, nobody can go in to be with him. And he's very, he's very confused. He, he, he says, why, why, why am I here? Where am I? Why am I here? Isn't that an awful state to be in? Let's just pray that God will touch his mind, his spirit, his body. Okay? So really, really, really be praying for him. And uh, Phil, uh, Taryn's brother, Phil, he is really, really struggling, isn't he, Taryn? I mean, just he's having more and more of those electric shocks through his body. He, he calls them jolts. Yes. And, and he's on the floor for hours at a time. And... and because his surgery isn't essential, they postponed it, and this and that and everything, which is really tragic because, you know, hey, listen, God can do whatever he wants. He can heal through surgery, medication. I don't care how God heals. It's all, he, all healing comes from God, right? All healing comes from God. And so this man needs some intervention, okay? So I am saying, let's agree together tonight that even though he's not able to get what he needs, either medication or surgery, that God will intervene, right? And that God will do an amazing thing in his body. And of course, I know there's many other things. Kathy really did, was unable to get that, that, that stimulating, uh, I don't know what they call it. <laughs> what is that? A stimulator. A spinal stimulator. Yeah, I could not think of the name of it. But it, a lot of these, and Pastor Bruce was saying after prayer this morning, it was interesting because, see, we were talking about Phil, we're talking about uh, Kathy, and Pastor Bruce said, you know what, I'm having all these horrible, serious neck issues, you know. So we, her over there yeah, so, yeah, who, 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 Denise, she's right, you're rubbing your neck. So let, let's really, let's come against whatever this spirit is that is afflicting our people in these neck issues, okay, these spinal issues. We've got to pray against that, right? You said this morning about um, bondage, and you don't come from today. I really, I believe that for so many years. Yes. It's a yoke of body. Just rip it off. Rip it off. Just like I preached Sunday morning. Remember? Blind Bartimaeus. Before he got his healing, he had to do what? Throw off the cloak. Right? Throw it off. Throw it off. And cry out to Jesus. Okay? Amen. And may I say something? I have a praise. You all have been praying for my daughter, Melissa. Yeah, yeah. And the uh, nausea. All of that has ended. Amen. And she's actually up above her initial pregnancy, uh, pre-pregnancy weight, which was something she wasn't able to attain for a couple of months. Yeah, yeah. So she's doing really good. The baby is really active. <laughs> That's really good. keeping her busy. That's good. Amen. But she's Amen. doing a lot better. And I, it's just, it's God. God Amen. proceeded in there yeah. because I was getting worried she was. Yes, I know you were. Way. Yeah, yeah. So praise the Lord for that. Amen. Yes. Amen. And then one final thing I want to mention to you, and that is, we got to intercede between now and these next 100 days for the election. We've got to intercede and cry out like we have never cried out before. You know, more and more news every time I look at this, I go, oh, you know, do I have to look at it? Do I have to read it one more thing, you know? But let me tell you, we, church, we got to pray. We got to come together. We got to believe tonight that God, we we're praying. We really had powerful, powerful prayer this morning, you know, for our country that God would just stay the hand of judgment just a little longer, just a little longer so that we can see a revival come into our midst, because that's what's going to change the hearts of the American people, is to return to the God of our fathers. Amen? Amen.
If you have any need tonight and you want to be anointed, just go ahead and sit here in the front pews, okay? And uh, a beautiful song, I'd rather have Jesus than anything, amen? Would you rather have Jesus tonight than anything this whole world can give you? So, Lord, that's our prayer tonight, that we'd rather have you than anything this old world. This world means nothing to us. We're citizens of another kingdom, another country, and we're looking for a city whose builder and maker is God tonight. We're just pilgrims passing through this whole world. <laughs> so, Jesus... We just want you to have your way tonight. 
And I pray that you'll just touch your people with your precious holy hand tonight. The great physician's hand heals the sick tonight. Thank you, Lord. And Lord, we do come to you tonight believing, believing in the power of prayer tonight. We believe in, in, in the healing, healing ministry of the Holy Spirit. We know that you are Jehovah Rapha. You are the God who heals us. Thank you. You are Jehovah Shalom. You are the God who gives us peace in the midst of our storms. You are Jehovah Nisi. You are our banner tonight. And that banner is the cross of Christ tonight. And we stand behind the cross. Oh, Jesus, there is no other place. Hide me in the cross tonight. Hide me in your cross tonight. Because there is no other safe place except the cross of Jesus Christ. And we thank you, we praise you for the blood tonight. We think that there is power in the blood. We think that the blood of Jesus is all powerful. And we give you glory. We give you praise. We give you, we give you all the authority, dominion, and it all belongs to you. And as those elders in, the, in John's vision, they were falling down before you over and over. And the angels were crying, and all heaven crying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, the thrice holy God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, holy are you, God, almighty God, and we worship you tonight. Such a good God you are. Such a good God. You love us so much. You love us so much. You only want our good. Your thoughts towards us, as we sang this morning, your thoughts towards us are thoughts of peace, not of evil, but of good, to give us a hope and a future, or a, a hopeful future. And Lord, we know that our, our hope our hope is not in the White House. It's not in the courthouse. It's not in the state house. Our hope is in God's house because this is God's territory. This is your church. It's your body. And we come under your authority tonight. We come under your authority, the authority of the head. The head tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. And we're going to lift up. Let, let, let's lift up right now. Let's up Jess. Come on. J Lord, touch Jess right now. Come to him, Lord. In, in his moment of, 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 of delirium and, and not really sure where he is and what, what he's doing there and all that and all, and all the illnesses and the sicknesses and the pain and all that that's going right now, just divinely, divinely intervene in that situation. And I'm praying that that family can get in there. That he needs it. That all of those people in nursing homes, they need their families. And I think, I think of the same thing of Betty White tonight. She's in a place where her family can't go see her either over in Jefferson Hills. And Lord, these people need their families. They need their families in these times. Oh God, it is, it is an injustice that they can't go in. And Lord, I, I, could never, I could never watch a loved one die via Zoom. Well, I can't watch. I can't bear that. I can't think about that. Oh God. I just pray, intervene there. Touch Betty tonight. Thank you, Lord, that there is, there's, a, there's, there's a, little, a little improvement there. But, Lord, she does have that infection in, in her stomach. And I pray right now, heal that infection right now. Just heal it in the name of Jesus. And help her, help her to get up and walk and to be moving so she can get out of that place. So she can get home. Touch her, Lord Jesus. I pray for Phil tonight. I pray for Phil that you would touch him, Lord Jesus. He loves you. He says, I, I'm finally home, and I found, a, I found a church where it's on fire, and, 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 and they went to the moving of God, and now he can't come. Lord Jesus, this isn't right. I pray, touch him right now. Touch him. Intervene. Intervene. Just heal that spine. Heal that spine tonight. Relieve him of those jolts that knock him to the floor and knock him out. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hear the cry of your people. They're interceding right now. And we pray for Pastor Bruce back there. Touch his neck, oh God. He's in so much pain tonight. He said it was just so painful today. And, and his job and, and, and just aggravating the situation. And, and he needs direction to know what to do, which direction to go. And he needs that MRI. And it's so, it's so costly. And I pray, touch him, Lord. Meet his need financially there. But also just touch that, whether it's a nerve or whatever's going on there. Just touch him, Lord Jesus. He says the pain just goes down his arm. It's, just, it's, it's shocking to him. 
I pray, oh God, touch him right now. I alleviate that pain. Thank you, Lord. And these that have come forward for anointing tonight, I'm just praying, oh God, that you'll just touch them. Touch them, Lord Jesus. Touch them. You are the great physician. Carol broke her toe this week, and we just pray, oh God, just touch her, Lord Jesus, right now with your precious holy hand. Oh, touch that toe. Bring total healing and restoration to her, Lord. She just needs a special intervention. She has so much on her plate to care for Charlie and Harmony and about all of that and everything else she does. I'm praying right now, oh, touch her, Lord Jesus. Bring healing to her body. Healing right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And Kathy, oh God, right now, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, how many times, oh God, but I don't care how many times we have to pray for her, if it's a thousand and one time, maybe that thousand and one time, you're going to heal that neck of hers. You're going to feel, I, I, I saw it again today, that the, the bones, the bones growing, and the, and, and, the, and the muscles around her neck, and the ligaments and all that, and the nerves acting correctly. And Lord, they couldn't go up there with that stimulator, and, and maybe there's a reason for that. Maybe, Lord, you just want to just do this mighty miracle in her body right now. <laughs> so, Lord, right now, and she cries out constantly, Jesus, your name, and the blood of Jesus is all powerful. So, Lord, I just pray right now, just do it, do it, Lord. Every time I see that spot, I just, I just, I see it filled in. I see it filled in, Lord Jesus. Filled in, Lord. Yes, yes. I, 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 it just came to, it just came to me, Kathy. That the Lord said He is the repairer of the breach. He, <laughs> the Lord just sent that to me. He is the repairer of the breach. Just like there were there, there were breaks in the walls and the, breaching in the walls that, that the wall couldn't be connected properly. The Lord repaired the breach. Thank you, Lord. So we're going to claim that for Kathy right now. You are the repairer of the breach in that neck. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. That's, good. That's a good word, Kathy. That's a good word. Amen, amen. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, good. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah, but she doesn't have any craze, but it's, it's like a, yeah. And mm the second thing is, Jim, when he comes back, there's a dog that he is hoping to get. Amen. Good, yes. Yes, and then the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Lord. First of all, we pray for Louise tonight. She's gone through all kinds of situations with the death of Ed and, and all of that. And But I thank you that Gina was there, and she's been such a help to her parents. So I'm praying right now for a blessing upon Gina. She did exactly what the Ten Commandments say. She honored her father and her mother. And I, and I pray that, that you, cause, and it says that they may live long in the land. And I pray you just give her full and happy life. Gina, Lord, I'm speaking that over Gina, right? Now receive that, Gina. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And I thank you that Louise quit smoking. I thank you, Lord, for that. And I'm praying that there will be absolutely no desire, no desire whatsoever to go back to those cigarettes. And I pray, Lord, just get, fill, it, fill it up. Whatever that void was in those cigarettes filled, just fill it up, Lord. Fill it with your spirit, with love, with love, with love. Thank you, Lord. And Lord, I am, I'm thanking you that Jim's on his way home. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. I cannot wait to grab that man. I know it'll just embarrass him to know him. That's all right. I can't wait, Lord, because I can't wait to see him. And I'm praying right now that this job that, it, that he's looking for, and you said you give us the desire of our hearts. That's what you said. And I'm praying right now that this job would open up and it would be the right job for him that would meet his schedule and that he'd be able to be here more than he was at the last one. In Jesus' name. Lord, you're more than able tonight. A yeah, amen. 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 Yes, amen. So in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. First of all, I, th I thank you for Missy. I thank you that, Lord, you answered our prayers and that she's getting wet. That baby is active. That's a great thing that babies are active. Thank you, Lord, for that. I pray a blessing. And as we prayed already, that that baby will be cut full term, a healthy baby, good weight. Thank you, Lord. But, Lord, I... She Taryn's standing, Taryn's standing in the gap for her brother, Phil. And, Lord, this man, he loves you. He desires to serve you. He, he has such a desire to be about the kingdom business. And I pray right now that you would set this man free. That he'd be able to get up and walk normally with no pain and those jolts. Lord, we, we like the jolts of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> we, think, we like those jolts. Yeah, but we, we don't like these other jolts that are going in our people's lives and their bodies. So I pray right now, deliver him. Deli just like you delivered blind Bartimaeus, I pray that he'll cast off that cloak. Yeah, I'm going to speak to everybody. We're going to cast off that cloak, Phil, right now. 
cast it off and receive your healing in Jesus name amen and amen amen yeah yeah for where is it is it DC DC yeah in the name of the Father Son and Holy Spirit we're, 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 pray, we're praying for Sarah tonight Lord I'm, I'm asking that you put your holy hand upon her heart her heart make her heart sensitive to the things of God Lord she's moving away and it's not what her parents want it's not what we want and Lord, it's, it's not the right decision. It really is not the right decision. We're going to just say that, right? right? It's not the right decision. And Lord, we are coming against that. And I pray that she'll be so dissatisfied, so unhappy, so miserable in that situation that you would bring her back home, that you would bring the prodigal home in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. Amen. Thank you, thank you. The Lord is able. Mm. Amen. Amen. And Brother Joel has a good word for us tonight. And hey, Wayne, while he's coming, <laughs> you're back, buddy. Okay. He's back, to his duty. He, he's back to his duty. I love it. I love seeing him. I love it when they're here. Okay. You got that? Yeah. There you go. Did you know what? Uh, uh, if you're going to try to get a hold of me, you can't. My phone is dead. It, it, it gave up the ghost <laughs> today. It literally gave up the ghost. They could not repair it over, you know, whatever. So I will be without a phone probably for several days. So if you're trying to get a hold of me, texting or calling, it's not I'm ignoring you. Okay, call Judy. That's what I said. Call Judy. Okay, she had the message to me. Okay. Uh, thank you so much. Good evening, the Church of God. Amen. I am so excited to be here this evening. Um, before I begin, I want to invite the presence of the Holy Spirit to give me the right words to speak. Amen. Almighty God, the creator of heaven and the earth, we exalt you and we thank you and we worship you because you deserve to be honored and glorified. Yes, we bow before you and we are here humbly sitting, waiting, and seeking for your presence. Speak in my mouth yeah. that your servants will listen not to me, but to your word. Yes. That may bring total restoration Amen. of that broken bridge for your kingdom. Yes. In Jesus' name I pray. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. Uh, for those who were here on uh, Sunday evening, I shared this uh, a little bit of the teaching on our uh, international service, but Pastor Joe asked me to present to uh, to you this evening. And you know, when you are a teacher, you will work with a curriculum. And when we work with a curriculum, you cannot jump A and you go and talk about Z. So it's very difficult, but he told me, please condense, and I'm going to jump from A to D. <laughs> so I'll leave other things out. Um, I am talking about relationship. The main topic is about relationship. And then when I went to the dictionary, I defined it in different def definitions of the word relationship. What came to my mind is about connection. It talks about connection, it talks about networking, it talks about friendship, it talks about linkage, it talks about association. And then, when it comes, we have different ways of defining. In the family level, we talk relationship between husband and wife, relationship between children and the, the parents, relationship between the neighbors, relationship between the workmates, relationship between the people that surround you. So, um, and we mentioned that it is, relationship is like a bridge. 
And you know, the, what the Lord is doing, nobody can tell. When Pastor was preaching, was praying about mending that bridge, it's that bridge of relationship that we are talking about. And it is not a relationship, just, just a mere relationship. It is the relationship between man and the Creator. It is the relationship between man and Jesus Christ, who is the Savior. It is the relationship between man and the Holy Spirit, who is the guide. So, what, um, when we talk about the relationship, what does the Bible tell us about the relationship? It goes back to the word Christian. Before, when we, we know ourselves to be called Christians, when, when people talk about Christian, what will come to your mind? What is Christian? But when I look into the scripture, I went back to the book of Luke, chapter 14, 26, uh, verse 26, 27, and then I jumped to 33. It says here that the name Christian was the first given to the disciples, and a, dis and a disciple is another word for a follower. And a follower of Christ, not a follower of anybody, is a follower of Christ. A one who is learning to be like his master. That is the, the, the definition of a Christian, is a follower of Christ, who is learning, not already learned, but he's on the process of learning to become like his master. So we are growing as we, we are in the relationship with Christ. We are growing as Christians. So, and uh, it went as a father, as a disciple, as a, as, a, as a disciple, you follow Jesus Christ, who is the master, and by living like him. Living like him because, and you become more like him. And then in the, in, Peter also says that Christians should also be called disciples. That is what Peter said. And the, there are conditions to be called a disciple. And when I was talking about, when I was trying relating uh, all this and talking about conditions, yes. when you are applying for a job, there are always conditions. Right. And uh, whether you, you meet the criteria or you fail out of the criteria, or you overqualified. But in this sense, um, when we are talking about the conditions for being a disciple are clearly written in the book of Luke, and it says, yes. And, he, and if, if anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Does it mean that you need to hate your father? No, it does not mean hating your father, but there is something in that father who does not glorify God that you need to hate it. You can, we cannot condone with the sin when it comes to building the relationship with Christ. And then when I talk about the conditions, now the, there are some characters. If I am working in the human resource department, I would have some characteristics that I would look for the right candidate who will be a suitable to fill my position. And here is what Jesus is giving us, is um, de describing to us who a Christian should be. Number one, we should, a Christian should be a free man. Free, Amen. free man, Amen. man who is not bound in sin. That's right. Free, who is forgiving. Free, not holding somebody, grudges with somebody. Free, yes. sleeping like a baby. <laughs> you don't need to worry about who did this, why this happened to me. Free. Amen. It is a great misunderstanding sometimes to think that being a Christian is just the same as what is called a pardoned sinner. No. This is a word you want to understand. We are not just called a pardon sinner. The Bible tells us that a pardon sinner is somebody who comes today, repent on the altar, 
we come and lay hands on them, on them, they go back and sin. And tomorrow they come again, oh, I have done A, B, C, Y, Z. We, I need prayer. That is what is called a pardon sinner. We do not want to be like that. Right. And that is what the Bible is telling us. So when you are called to be a Christian, you are called to be free of sin. And then he says, my little children, these things are right to you that you may not sin. Right. We are given instruction not to, to continue sinning when you know that it is wrong. It is wrong. Right. Now, thanks be to God who is always leading us to that triumph in Christ. That is free. Number two. The characters number two that can make you qualify for the title to be called a Christian is not merely a meeting goer. Yeah. Not merely a person that comes to the church and sits in this pew for every, from January to December. And you own this seat, this seat. It is yours. Whoever comes, you, when he feels in that and you look at him, who are you today here? We are not this kind of people. Okay? So we are not just a mere people that are called to fill the pews. So, what did this, the scripture tell us? <laughs> Being a Christian does not mean that you are a religious meeting goer, somebody who goes to Christian meetings rather than places of worldly entertainment. Some people think that when you come to the church, you are more Christian than when you go to a disco dance. Well, that is correct, but you never know when you go to the disco dance, dance maybe you can win the souls to Christ. <laughs> but that is not the point. Otherwise, it is just like people, not as at all. Christian is someone who brings his life yeah. into a complete yeah. harmony with the word of God. Yeah. Complete. complete. We're not halfway. That's right. Complete. Yeah. That's it. Um, he, and a Christian, not, he is righteous where others are unrighteous. He is patient where others are impatient. He is diligent where others are lazy and exact where others are inexact he speaks the truth boldly wherever they are not flattering That's right. we uh, play a true behavior not a hypocrite does not lie he is always meek long suffering quiet where others are hot tempered. Yeah. There are some people in our community, when you talk to them, they are so grouchy. <laughs> we as Christians should have no, that character should not be identifying us. Yeah. 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 Character number three. Christian is unselfish. Being a Christian, you, we should be unselfish. What does the scripture tell us about? A trait of true Christian is that he is completely unselfish. It means that he starts thinking about others' needs and God's working in their hearts. What is good and practical for them and what would benefit them? Then, according to his ability, he helps them to obtain it. Being a Christian, you are, we are like a leading hand. Yes. We put our brothers and the sisters first, not ourselves. We give our time, we give whatever we have to the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. And then a Christian is synonymously with the serving and the giving. Yes. And this is the point I was talking. We are serving with the giving. Not with the receiver, being receivers. We give. Whether money, time, ourselves, we give to the Lord. And, and God will help us to obtain the true Christian life. Christianity is not just a name. It is a dedication. 
Character number, th number four. Free from the spirit of time. F what does this mean? The scripture tells us that someone who is called a Christian or somebody who is a Christian is not being influenced by the spirit of time. When time, when I was doing the research, is talking about whether you want to look like a fashion show. <laughs> we go with, the, oh, tomorrow we got a new dress. I want to get this one, and then I want to make this, and all that. I don't talk to, you know, I don't, I don't mean to offend you, my, my sisters. <laughs> but the, 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 the scripture is telling us that we should not be that type of the person that needed to be identified as um, a with the spirit of time. So when we come to the church, we don't come here just to show ourselves. We come here to serve the Lord. Amen. The fifth characteristic is being righteous. The scripture tells us that being a Christian means that a person is righteous in all affairs. There is no hidden agenda. There is nothing that you show yourself, you, you look here white, and then when you go somewhere, you look blue. Yes. No. When I am black, this is my creation, I will remain black. Yes. I don't mean I, I cannot change. So when we are called to be Christians, we should be doing the right things not to be identified in hidden affairs. Yes. So, therefore, if he or she has taken somebody, somebody's thing, we who are Christians, if we have borrowed somebody, the scripture tells us that return it. Yes. Return it. It will make us to be pure Christians. If he is in debt, he will make every effort to pay it. If we are in debt with the sins that we have, we have to pay it to the cross. We have to pay it back. We have to come and pay and say, God, we are, here we are. A Christian, because of his progressive victory over his own lust and the desire, starts to enjoy perfect rest in his heart. Perfect rest. If we believe in Christ and we are in Him, we don't need to, to be worried about anything. That's right. That's right. As a Christian, we have to appreciate the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Because it moves more than what we think. And always I said, if, it, if this is how the Holy Spirit is manifesting Himself in us, let Him work in us. Who am I to prevent it? Right. That is the work of the Christian. We observe the presence of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Character number, yes. number six. Constant devotion or development. We should be in a constant development. Yes. Constant development means what? Continuous growth. Yes. You, you, we grow continuously. It, it, it doesn't mean that, and the, the word development, when you look in psychology, it, it, it is different from growth. Yeah. Growth, can, something can grow and has time, an end limit of growth. But the development will start from growing, even when you are aging, it is development. So we as Christians should continue Developing ourselves in the word of the Lord. Amen. Because by the word of the Lord, Amen. we live a solid ground. Amen. Where we lean to a rock, a solid rock, yes. with a solid foundation. Yes. Yes. Finally, Christ tells us in the book of Revelation that having been faithful to God by obeying his commandment as given by him by to him by God's son Jesus Christ a Christian will be rewarded yes. with what everlasting life Amen. 
death to the word of everlasting life. Who is not waiting for that? Right. We are waiting for that yeah. everlasting life. Right. We, we are waiting when we are talking about being impatient. I'm very impatient to wait for the everlasting life. Yeah. That is the only thing I'm waiting for. That's right. That's right. Amen. So, a Christian who believes in the Son has been has everlasting life. And he who does not believe in the Son shall not see that life. Right. It's so sad. Who does not believe will not see that life. Because whoever drinks from the water that I will give him yeah. will never thirst. Amen. Amen. When we go to that heaven, when we trod on the road that is gold, and we will drink that spring of the living water that will never dry. And it's a crystal water. Amen. Amen. Isn't God not good? <laughs> the Lord is wonderful. Amen. Therefore, it says that um, the sea will give up all the dead. Yes. Yes. Those who died, the sea is going to account. The earth is going to account. Those who have been buried, they will come again to have that everlasting life which is waiting for us. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, and the blessing of God the Father Almighty, mm -hmm. and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. You did a great job. Oh my goodness, what a power, isn't that a powerful word? I'm telling you, a powerful word. Thank you. Excellent, Thank and that's you. exactly what I wanted you to do. Thank you. You get an A. Uh. You get an a. That's so good, I'm telling you. Those, those, those characteristics, they were so powerful and so solid, you know. And I just, I, you just needed to hear those. You needed to hear that, wasn't that good? That was so, so worth it. And you know what? Everything he's saying can be summed up in that first song that we sang. Can we just go back to that? Can we just go back to that? And let's just do Lord be glorified one more time, okay? So can we go back to those first slides there, guys? Thanks. I appreciate it. Let's sing it one more time as we close out tonight. Make this our prayer. All those characteristics that we were just talking about, that Joel was just sharing with us, powerful. Let's just pray that God will just manifest those in our lives today. Today and always, so that one day we're going to drink from that well that never shall run dry. Amen. that you would present to yourself, you said you would present to yourself a church without spot or wrinkle, a beautiful bride adorned for her husband. And Lord, every one of these characteristics that Brother Joel has shared with us tonight, may they be manifested in us, in everything we say, everything we do, everything we think. I pray, oh God, that we would manifest those characteristics of being a Christian, being a disciple, that we want to be more like Jesus, more and more and more like Jesus. 
may you shine more in our lives because as we look full in your wonderful face, all the things of this old world grow strangely dim in the light of your glory and your grace. So may we receive the blessing that Joel spoke over us and that may we walk in that developing relationship with you, Jesus, so that we may one day be found worthy when you call when the earth gives up its dead and the ocean gives up its dead and we who are alive are caught up together with them in the air may we ever be with our lord amen amen and amen god bless you guys thank you love you thank you for being here tonight thank you brother joel so